Hello and welcome back. Okay, so last time I sat down troubleshooting this with the oscilloscope, we worked out that there was a ground connection issue which was causing the increments over here, but we've still got the corrupted text coming out. So there's obviously something still wrong, but uh, I think it'd be worth uh, digging around a little bit more and seeing what we can find. One thing we did notice is quite a horrible burst of noise on the ground line at a specific point. So I want to go hunting for that again. Okay. So we've still got quite a bit of noise on there, but we've got these really big bursts of it. We probably want to solve all of this where the spikes go anywhere near the TTL threshold, but let's look at this big burst of it before we uh, try and track down the small ones. Now when I looked at it before, we noticed this was happening in the cycle before the increment, which in the program code is a memory read. So let's, uh, let's have a look at that specifically. Slow this back down. If we're lucky, this will happen consistently. That's interesting. The ground noise happens at slightly different levels depending on what instruction we're executing. And there's our big burst. Seems to be happening consistently, which is good, insofar as we can poke around and see where it's coming from. All right, this light is off and we're telling device 15 to assert to the bus. So yeah, that's a memory read operation. Yeah, we've got the assert address over here on SI. Let's see what's on the bus. Ooh. Okay, we basically have pure noise on the bus everywhere. What about the memory bus? Okay. Similar but lower. Okay, so this half of the memory bridge should be asserting this value onto the main bus. It's this line. Someone did comment on my video, but if I pull the end, yeah, pull the end off the probe, actually a pin there that looks like it will fit in to a breadboard. Okay, I think this could actually be an explanation for what we're seeing. So the purple line here is the control line that's active low to say that the memory contents or the data on the memory data bus is asserted onto the main bus. And this seems to be bouncing up and down across the threshold point. So we're used to seeing little glitches on the, the ground rail when something draws current. But I think what's happening here is we've actually got a, a different situation than we've had before, where we had one device was drawing power, causing a glitch on the ground lines, and that caused a rogue increment over here on DI. But in this case, I think what we've got is a similar situation, but where the glitch is caused by this data being asserted onto the bus and suddenly drawing a bunch more power, and the glitch is big enough to change the state of that assert line, so it, it ends up oscillating. Well, that's my theory anyway. So what can we do about that? I can already hear Def Pom telling me I need more decoupling. Well, that instantly stopped. Can it be that simple? Nah. Okay, the yellow and purple traces should actually be on the same line at the moment. Both grounded in the same location. Ah, but the yellow one I've put on the lower leg of the LED. If I transfer it over there, yeah, we're seeing roughly the same signal. Okay, so there's our burst of noise. So the decoupling cap didn't get rid of it. It may just have broken the oscillation before. Hang on. If 
every single LED here is flashing. As we've done here, but one's not coming on. That's curious. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Third bit in my bus display doesn't work. I don't think this is a source of problems, but it's certainly weird. It's actually a little bit worrying that I can have a solder joint which looks fine, but isn't. Okay, as expected, it made no difference, but at least we can see the value on that LED now. Okay, so let's try connecting this ground across. That's not making any difference. Okay. So we can see a difference from the decoupling cap, but it's not enough. So we need to get those bits of noise underneath the TTL high threshold. Not very sure about this at the moment. Second capacitor makes virtually no difference. Okay. When we, we ran with the old transfer register, we didn't have this, well, we didn't have the side effects of this problem. So, I would be interested to know how different those traces look without this. Keep borrowing wires from this board, thinking I won't ever need it again. Okay, well that's curious. The, uh, the bounce back spike is still there, but it doesn't seem to be causing the same kind of problem. So could I have been wrong? Could it be this board? It is worrying the way this is absolutely rock solid without the other PCB in. I don't like the bounce on this trace, so I wonder what else we can do to try and reduce that. Okay, so this yellow line is the difference in ground right next to the bus control PCB. And ground over here, despite the fact that we've got a wire connecting them pretty closely. Okay, so that signal is coming from main bus assert high here. Its ground pin is this one. Okay, that was bad. I accidentally shorted a wire. Right, so that is comparing ground on DI to ground at that location. There's a bigger difference than I would expect. Those are quite tightly connected. And that is ground where it would go to the transfer register. That looks a lot like the noise we're seeing.
Okay, so there's a bit of a break there. I was actually just on MakerCast, so I'm going to provide a video link up here and in the description. You can see I swapped out my code to uh, give a little bit of a demonstration, but it serves the same purpose. Let's get back to taking a look at this thing. So this is the memory read signal. It's telling the memory bridge here to assert the contents of mem data onto the main bus. And this bouncing around is, uh, is what I'm worried about. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to clean that up a lot when I spin a new version of the bus control with a lot more decoupling in it. So I want to switch back to the main transfer register and maybe have a look at the difference. I really want to get to the bottom of whether or not there is a problem with the transfer register board or whether or not I've just got more circuitry on there so I see slightly more of that bounce. Now, if you watch the maker cast, you'll spot that I did have an error on this program that only appeared briefly during the maker cast, so mildly embarrassing, but that does uh, reinforce the idea that the underlying problem isn't with this, it's present in the board regardless. That's not looking very good. That's okay. All right, let's see if we can take a look at that memory read signal again. Now, people always say in the comments that with the scope probe we have to connect the ground as close as possible to the signal. But of course we seem to be investigating some of the ground differences, so there's a question there of whether or not we uh, connect it over here, close to where the signal is used, or over here, close to where the signal is generated. Okay, so when we get wrong characters here, it's associated with the burst of noise we see over here, which we think is caused by one of these bounces triggering the line to switch off and then it's just going into an unstable state. Let's take a look. So this should be main bus load high. It's going to be the pin next to ground. So that's this one here. No, this is main bus assert high. There we go. So that signal looks a lot more reasonable. Let me follow it down here. And it's a bit more bouncy. So with ground anchored over here, it just gets worse and worse the closer we get to where it's going. It does improve very slightly if we put that in, which is connecting ground over here. So it's similar to how we solved the problem up there. Although right now that's being very stable. I'm seeing occasional glitches there. Put this in, and they tend to reduce out. That gives me hope we're not that far off uh, being stable. See what the lines look like over here. So that's the signal to load data onto the LCD. A little bit of a bounce on it, but not the end of the world. Okay, I'm going to stick the original ROM back in. That's looking pretty stable as well. Okay, I do have one thing I want to look at a little bit. So the bumps we see on all these lines always coincide with the period after the clock cycle. I have been suspicious that LEDs 
are adding to the problem. Not seeing any difference there. The reason why I'm thinking this is these LEDs are hooked directly to the main bus and this is the chip where we were seeing the occasional strange oscillation and so I'm thinking well this one triggers to assert memory data to the bus it drains a bit of current powering these LEDs which pulls VCC and ground closer together which then turns this off a bit and then it goes into the non-stable oscillation so I think it would be wise, at least on the main bus, to stick some extra buffering in front of the LEDs. OK, well, this seems to have stabilised. Pretty much just came down to adding a few extra ground ties. But we've definitely got traces that we think we can clean up a bit with some more decoupling capacitors. And I think it's worth re-spinning this. There's uh, some quite complicated ground paths in here I want to deal with, but I'll probably show that in a brief video in the future once I've got the new PCB. I'm going to do a new backplane for this as well, because the PCBs here are strip board, so ground has a little bit of a complicated path around here. So if I uh, invest in a new backplane that sits behind this, with a nice big solid ground plane and maybe a few extra bits of power decoupling on that as well. I think we're going to uh, get a more stable execution. But as we are right now, I think we're stable enough to, uh, to move on with the build and actually add some functionality again. And adding memory is going to be probably the biggest single uh, step forward. Once we've got some RAM in this, the processor is going to be Turing complete. And whilst I'll add some additional functionality beyond them that's going to make it a lot more flexible and functional, adding RAM is, uh, is a big leap forward. So as long as this stays working, that should be the next CPU build video. But I hope you've found this whole uh, diagnosis process interesting. For me, it's been quite a steep learning experience with getting the oscilloscope and actually seeing what some of these lines are. So uh, I hope you've uh, stuck through it and uh, yeah, be more built soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.